Okay, so this is take two. Uh, we've been walking around Reading. <laughs> we've been walking around Reading. We got kicked off our last location uh, down by the river um, because uh, apparently we were um, obstructing something or another, some security or what have you. Um, so we've just been walking around. We went into a restaurant to ask if they would let us film around the back. They said no. Uh, so here we are back in a more discreet, hopefully, secluded part of uh, yeah. the river in Reading. We were meant to do this originally, Peter, um, about two, two weeks ago. And um, you hurt your arm during a audition. Tell us what happened. Well, I went to this casting for a viral to uh, do drunk walking, mm -hmm. to be a drunk walker. And it was a, seemed like a good thing. And I did a, did a couple forward ones and I thought, well, Shall I do a backward? So I started to do a backward one, but the momentum of me moving too fast mm -hmm. just took me over and I fell and broke my wrist. Mm. But, but unfortunately, you know, they, they, they loved it, I think, you know, it's just great to do. And what, what happened was uh, they thought it was part of the act. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> what was their Is that what they thought? They, they, they weren't phased or anything? No, just, not just... at the beginning. So yeah. I said no, it wasn't, and then they realised I'd actually maybe I'd damaged my wrist a little bit, but uh -huh. I still carried on. Being uh -huh. a, a bit of, but I still carried on with the casting and did a few more bits for them. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> a bit of the casting. It was on the way home that I realised there, there must be something wrong. There must be something wrong with his wrist. <laughs> and how long yeah. have you got to, uh, left in the cast? I've got another four weeks. Four weeks. So not too bad. No. Okay. Right. Unfortunately, then. you lose walk through it, but you know that's life. That is life. <laughs> <laughs> You're currently studying um, at the London Actors Workshop in London, obviously, um, in Covent Garden. That's what I was meant to say. Um, and this weekend, you experienced quite an um, intense part of the training, which was with Valerie, uh, yes. about method acting. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about, you know, about what happened there, because this is as far as we got on it the last was, bit. It was fascinating. It was, it was really mind-opening, not just eye-opening, but mind-opening, mm -hmm. which is really is very interesting when you get your mind open to something which wasn't there and which, which worked on your mind and your mind open to something which was really fascinating. I, I, I found it fascinating how, what she was getting, getting at. Mm -hmm. I find it, but what I find one of the interesting things about what she was teaching us was, was, was um, having feeling. And I do a bit of singing, so I find singing a, is a fascinating way to, to get feeling. Because mm. singing, you, you have to have a lot of feeling in singing to, to put the story across. Mm -hmm. But the, the whole thing was interesting because everybody had their own way of uh, have getting something out of their system, which I think is, which was dormant for a long time. Mm -hmm. Not dormant, but kind of sleeping a little bit. Mm. Right, and it, get, uh, it came up with the people, and there's two or three people who wanted me, use me as, as a, a buffer to be the father mm -hmm. figure. Mm -hmm. And I found it fascinating that you know there were so many people were having problems with, with parents or with, with uh, siblings. Mm -hmm. and it's more common than what you think. More common than that you, that you think, mm -hmm. how many people really had that problem. But I found it interesting for me, it kind of open something more dominant in me than by, by the fact that I was brought up as an orphan. Mm -hmm. I was forced to die a couple of times, that's another story. Mm -hmm. But I, I I found it fascinating because it made me think, you know, when I was young, I would have loved to have, even if it was bad sort of things, to have that sort of uh, a relationship with a real parent and a real brother or a real sister. Mm -hmm. but, that, that, that is life, but now I'm very happy. I'm married, been married for 40 years, a lovely woman. I've got two kids, mm -hmm. two lovely kids, and uh, life is great, I feel. <laughs> life is fabulous. And that's yeah. nice to hear in front and of the camera. Life, as I said to the, the guys, I said, I said to the guys afterwards, I, I didn't do something on my own. I took what I got from that, and I told, I said it to, to Val, could I make this as my part mm -hmm. and she was very happy because she, 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 it, it, she it brought something to her that there is another side people who don't have that mm -hmm. situation can can bring to 
to the to the thing. You know? Do you think people were like tapping into sort of very raw emotions? Very, very raw, very, very, very raw. Yeah. It was so raw. It was so fascinating. It was so intense that it was a three-hour session which lasted, which lasted like half an hour. Mm -hmm. It just seemed to be a half an hour. It just seemed to fly by. But we were there for three hours, and it was really intense, fascinating, mm -hmm. uh, very, very, very educational. Yeah, and the way Val, Val, she, she took it on herself. She's an American, isn't she? No. Or she's, Canadian? She was brought up in, she's actually originally from Northern Ireland. Right, okay. Because yeah, I heard an accent there. She was brought up there. in Canada. Gotcha. Yeah. Right, I understand. Now, what I found was that she took part, she involved herself in it as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, she had a little cry as well, mm -hmm. uh, which I found fascinating. But, and most people did have a little, even myself, mm -hmm. at the end, you know? Mm -hmm. And I found that quite intense that you got that, that from it. Because there's some songs that I sing that I do get that little bit in the eye, you know, a little wetting of the eye. Tell me so, a song. Um, there's a couple of songs like that, which I, I, I find uh, mostly to do with family. There's a, a song which I learned when I, I was living in Hawaii for a year, and worked in Hawaii for a year. Mm -hmm. I worked as a waiter over there of all things <laughs> in a Japanese restaurant. I met this girl and, yeah, it's going to go. But there was a guy, uh, there's a singer from Hawaii called Kui Lee, and he had this fabulous song, Days of My Youth, which I found fascinating, a lovely, lovely song. More to when I had my own son, it, 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 was, it came into existence and that song is, you know, makes me cry and mm. I, I, even things like My Way yeah. you know, uh, make me cry. I do My Way quite a lot. <laughs> yeah, but there's lots of songs which you really get the feeling when, uh, uh, you know, as Val says, it comes from down in here. Of course. Everything comes from here, you know, and it was fascinating when we were doing that course that everything did end up coming down from here and coming, you know. To like, the surface. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tell me how long you've been associated with the performing arts. I suppose... When did it all start for you? It, well, well, performing arts for me started when I was five years old. Mm -hmm. Very, very minor. I was sang once on stage in a cinema when I was five years old. Mm -hmm. Right? Then, of course, nothing else happened to me then until I was about... Um, oh, well, 28, 29 when I went to Jersey. And I did a little bit of cabaret in Jersey. Jersey? Jersey in the Channel Islands. Oh, well, did you go to St. Helier? I was in St. Helier, yeah. Oh, yeah, and I, I know Jersey to, well. And I did cabaret in St. Helier at the, at the waterside and at the tack. Uh -huh. And I was a singer-comedian. Mm -hmm. And uh, that sort of thing. And it was quite great fun. Who were your early influences in the comedy parts of things? Oh, uh, Who did you I like? Think, Who did oh, you like? Ronnie Barker's my all-time yeah. favourite uh -huh. comedian, I think. Uh -huh. But I like Billy Connolly, but he's... But his uh, insight into human nature is uh -huh. uh, I find fascinating. Ooh, there's your water. Yeah, keep, your keep, water. keep a guard of that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I, I like the visual comedy personally myself. Mm -hmm. I like visual comedy. I like that because I do. I do like to do it myself with making faces and that sort of stuff. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. I hear an accent, yeah. sir. Tell me, tell us where you're from. I originally actually was, I was born in Glasgow, mm -hmm. but was brought up outside Edinburgh. Okay. You know. How yeah. long were you, how long, were, how old were you when you moved down south? I was, I went to sea when I was, I left school when I was 15. Okay. I worked in Edinburgh for about 18 months doing stuff, and then I had about going to sea, and I went to sea. Okay. In the Merchant Navy. Okay, I tell went us to a bit about school. that. I went to sea school down in Sharpness. I'd never been out of England in my life, mm -hmm. out of Scotland in my life, and went down and did this training, and I just found it fascinating because it was the first time I had a situation of actually being with people and being in that, having a friendship type situation, mm -hmm. making friends. And then when I did that, I did well at the, at the sea school. I became what they called the captain's tiger which is the captain was a, who was in charge and the main man at the school and I looked after him and mm -hmm. sort of got his tea and coffee and made his bed, that type of stuff. That's what was our captain's tiger was called. Okay. And it set me a good thing for when I went to sea. Uh, I first went back up to Edinburgh and was on little ships going across to uh, to Europe for a mm -hmm. little while. You know, for the, of course, the first two days at sea was going from, from um, a place called Grangemouth over to to, uh, to to Antwerp. Okay. And I spent two days, absolutely 
on the back of the boat just pearl diving, which is called pearl diving at sea is actually when you're sitting peeling potatoes. Right. And we used to call it pearl diving, <laughs> peeling the potatoes. And I sat there one uh, very near to the edge of the ship, and uh, every so often, uh, <laughs> for two days. So and then I got used to get my sea legs. Uh -huh. So I eventually got my sea legs, and I thought to myself, oh, I'm not happy with this, I want to be on the big ships. Mm -hmm. and what the big ships is, is the big passenger ships, all that. So I got myself together, they wouldn't pay for me fare down to Southampton, so I made it on my own back and went down and ended up in San sat in the off Cunard offices mm -hmm. for oh, two days. Just sat there, not for the whole two days, came back each day and eventually this is all fed up seeing your face, get on the here. Here's a ticket, here's your ticket, here's a ticket, get on the Queen Mary. <laughs> so I ended up being on the Queen Mary and as a door boy. Okay. Yeah, a cabin boy rating and uh, that was that was in nineteen sixty three. And not the fact it was November 1963, and it was the. That was when uh, was Kennedy a, got shot, yeah? That was the week Kennedy got shot. Yeah. My first trip to America. Wow. So that was that. And then uh, I did the Queen Mary, Queen Elizabeth. And, uh, I did quite a few few ships here. Mm -hmm. uh, the Cunard Piano. I did the Caroni, which had a lovely t time. The World Cruise on the Caroni, which was a fascinating education. You know? mm -hmm. That was my first time around the world. Mm -hmm. yeah, and, and then I went on the Piano for a couple and went to Australia. And, South Sea Islands and all that sort of stuff, which was really, really cool. Yeah. And, uh, that was until uh, nearly nine years, and then I ended up going to Hawaii after that for a year. Right. I met this girl, of course, it's always down to a girl, and ended up going to Hawaii and met this girl in Hawaii. And, yeah. you know, and then I worked in Hawaii and, uh, as a waiter. What was her name? Eh? What was her name? Caroline Kipopo. <laughs> Still remember it to this day. Oh. So she, she did strike a chord in my heart. Thing. She was she was half Hawaiian, half Korean. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, listen, I, I could listen to you a lot, lot longer about all this part, but we've got to move on to the acting. Yeah. Um, tell us a little bit of experience that you've had in 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 film and in, in like because you, you, you've done quite a lot, haven't you? Yeah, I have done quite a lot in my short time as an actor. I mean, I've started doing things in ninety. 96, but just doing very little. Mm -hmm. A little bit here, a little bit there. I did mm -hmm. a few bits. I did a, a very nice uh, thing for uh, BT where I was. I ended up with a big poster on the tubes in London, which was oh. really cool. I did one of those, and that was a very nice paying thing. And I, I'm sure it was. I did a few little bits, uh, your, your, uh, background, just background. Was like, this through extras agencies? Extras and agencies, yeah. yeah. An agency, I was only ever with one agency at that point. What were they called? They were called JB. Okay. Unfortunately, not, no longer. Then they, 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 they were very nice to me and I used to get a wee job because I was still a chauffeur. Uh -huh. I was still working. I was a, working as a chauffeur for 35, 35 years. So that's another story of all the yeah. infamous people that I met and all that sort of stuff. I've had quite an interesting way. And what's that. some of the most recent work you've been doing? The most recent was I've done Harry Potter. Mm -hmm. I've played a okay. in Harry Potter. And which, which one was that I one? Was the, the last one. The last one. Yeah, Deathly Hallows, and <coughs> I played two or three parts in that actually. But the main part I did in that was one of the moving images on the stair. And where was that filmed? Was that, that was filmed in Leavesden, okay. in North London, which right. was fascinating. Yeah. Okay. And I've sang on EastEnders and the Carol Choir. I've sang on Midsummer Murders. I've done many, quite a few Midsummer Murders. I've okay. done some quite good adverts as well. Different background. I did one which went. Uh, national for Vistaprint. Everybody knows Vistaprint. Uh -huh. And I did an advert, the first ever advert for Vistaprint that they ever had in this country. Mm -hmm. And it ended up going worldwide. So what? Oh. I found out it went into Australia and everywhere. That's it's fantastic. Cool. Uh, I've got it recorded at home in about five languages at the moment <laughs> French and German and Swiss, yeah. Belgian, Dutch. Are you drawn towards the screen or the stage? I'm drawn towards screen more, I think, because I'm not very good with um, dialogue. Mm -hmm. That's one of my... In what sense? What in you, sense what of, you mean? of learning dialogue. Gotcha. Memory-wise, to, right. to, to keep it. Well, if I can do it in spots, like when they do it on time, you, you learn it a bit, but you can do little, you can stop and do it. But the thing is that song, the fascinating thing is that songs, I learn songs, and I can remember songs from any song that I learn, I remember mm -hmm. it completely. Yeah. Which I suppose if I did get myself into doing it proper that way and had the time, I presume I could learn. I've got, an, inter I've got an interesting question, because I've got a lot of musical background yeah. as well. What would you, would you say that 
Do you learn a melody more? Do you remember the melody more or the words more? Both in combination. Really? It's a combination of both which actually get, goes in the memory. I think just a great melody is just there, isn't it? It's, it's just there. in the back of your mind. It is, you, yeah. you hear it. And you, you, all you've got to do is hear it once. Yeah, that's and then right. It's there. Yeah. And if you have a musical bent, you will remember it. Yeah. Because it, it comes out, it, it's like a rhythm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And your memory, your memory works like a computer, so it just comes out as you go along. You, you won't have sung the song for years and years, and it, you'll hear it on the TV, and you'll be singing along to it because it. it you remembered it, the words because you've learnt the words. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And that, that's how it's with, with the singing. It, it, one of my great ambitions is one of my main ambitions is to sing in a musical in the West End. I would love to do something like that. You know, uh -huh. like to I would like to like like uh, you know, Don Quixote or something. This is your dream like role. That. This is my dream role. Yeah. Right. Yeah, okay. Even for one night, uh -huh. it would be fa fabulous. What's one of your favourite West End musicals? I love all the musicals, really. I love them all. Any musical, out of Oklahoma, uh, Carousel, all them sort of things I love, you know. Uh, the, 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 the um, Les Mis, mm -hmm. it's one of the things I was so sad I never got fingers up. I'd be fabulous at that. I think singing on Les Mis live, <laughs> I just love, I just love singing. I, I do a lot of um, karaoke stuff, but I would like to, I would love to be a, 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 to sing it and, and as I say I have done singing on telly. It's very therapeutic isn't it? Yes and it was I fascinating when I did EastEnders because it, uh, it, the, the singing, we had a, there was a singing coach Okay. and she actually made me the lead voice. Right. That, when was this? The, for the pitch. Okay. get the pitch, you know how they have to do the pitch? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She said I had the perfect pitch in this. La, 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 she made me sing the first, la, 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 la. she made yeah. me first sing the first line in the, the, the song. Yeah. And she said that, okay, that's the pitch everyone needs to get uh -huh. to what Peter's done. Wow. And that, um, it, it took me aback in a way, because it was, it shows that these people really listen to you. No, of course, they do listen, yeah. No, no, know? definitely, it's nice to feel listened to. You must have got to hear me in the background that I was, <laughs> that I could, uh, you know, <laughs> Which I found fascinating. I loved it, loved it, and that was back in uh, 2010, okay. Christmas 2010, in the Carol Choir. Yeah. Right. yeah. How do you view the industry in 2013? I find it. Uh, oh, the industry is interesting. It's uh, it's hard work. Mm -hmm. One of the things I don't agree with, which unfortunately is one of the things which is uh, unfortunate, but the, a it, drawback. I, drawback is there's far too much, I think, far too much uh, non-paid work out there. Non-paid work? Far too much. Uh -huh. uh, uh, I do think people are take advantage of people uh -huh. in that sense of uh, non-paid work. Uh -huh. I can understand with students' work, yes, yes, but when you get companies doing it, I'm sorry, that's not, uh, especially big companies, uh -huh. and, uh, and doing fixed rates and things like that, I don't, that people and not getting paid for their talent, not getting paid for what they're, mm -hmm. in a way, you know. That, that is the way it is, I suppose, but that's something I've always done. I, I, I limit myself Is that something to, that's crept into in recent years? I think it's crept in quite recently. Really? really? Yeah, something that's creeping in more and more as well, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's because there's so many people at it. I, I must it, admit, I remember once, once upon a time, this was a few years ago, I, I, I got some work, um, I got some extra work uh, with an extras agency, and... Um, you know, for me, it was just a thrill of being involved. Yeah. It was. And we did a cancer research advert, and I never got paid for that. Mm. And I didn't even chase it up. I just sort of let it go. Maybe I shouldn't have That's let right. it go. But, but I things just... like, like, like charity things, yeah, you can. It but wasn't about money. To, when you get to things like uh, that, that uh, series is on TV, which are, which are put all over the world, yeah, and yeah. The, the, you, the, the people are going there for, for, for uh, a 12, 10, 12 hour day, mm -hmm. and they get 50 quid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. No. It's... You know? I know what you mean. Uh, that can be, I, I think that's uh, something that should be looked at. And mm -hmm. I think, I am e equity, but I think maybe they could do a bit more by looking into that situa those situations and kind of curtail it slightly. You know. Tell us about your website. My website, well, I didn't know what to do if I have, because I'm not very literate on these sort of things, uh, the computer things and I'm a little bit dyslexic as well, so I mean I find it hard to write things, to do things mm -hmm. like that. And um, what's the address? <clears throat> the address is Peter is www.peterpburrows.co.uk. 
Okay, right. I'll yeah. have to write that one down. We'll, we'll put this in, in the video, in, oh, underneath the video. That'd be cool. cool. No, no, cool. great yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, and what kind of things are on there? Uh, all my porters are on there, and all the little bits and pieces that I've done, all the sort of the student stuff I've done. I've some lovely student stuff. All my hip hop videos, <laughs> all my rap videos. <laughs> I just stop doing everything. You know, the latest thing I've got that's going to be going on there is that the craze going out at the moment for this. Um, uh, Harlem Shake. Okay. Yeah, I've got something called Harlem Shake on the YouTube, which is pretty big at the moment. I've got one of those out as well, <laughs> which I did for Channel 4, which was fascinating. Yeah, yeah. What does acting do for you, Peter? It gives me life. Anything That's it. a bit more? It gives me life. It gives me uh, a, a reason to, to live, a reason. Uh, to meet people, mm -hmm. the reason to make people happy, which I've always wanted to do through my life. Mm -hmm. I, I just love, I love be making people happy, or making them smile, and doing that. That that be, uh, I've always had that nature of um, yeah, wanting to do. Mm -hmm. I want to do all the time, and I, I want to be be active. I once heard a quote once that said, "A life lived for others is a life worth living." Oh, definitely. I live my life for others. Yeah. I don't know and where that's from. I, 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 just, I read it somewhere yeah. years and, and like, like a great melody. It yeah. sticks in yeah. your head. Yeah. Okay, FTQ. Who did you like when you were growing up in the music world? I liked Elvis. Would you welcome back national service? Definitely. A place in Scotland you would advise people to visit? Sky. Do you believe in the Loch Ness Monster? I believe <laughs> in the mystery. <laughs> one of your favourite comedians. Although we've said that a little bit, haven't we? But carry on. Yeah. yeah Who, yeah. one of your favourite comedians? Yeah, one of them, I suppose, I'll, I'll let you put one as well, uh, Stanley Baxter, uh, among, among many. What was it about him? Stanley Baxter is just so, he's, he's one of these comedians who's not just a comedian, but he's an actor and he, he, he just does, he, he's, he's, he's just fabulous. Mm -hmm. He can do any, any part, he can play anything mm -hmm. and make it comical. But can also make things serious too, which is uh, I find fascinating, you know. <laughs> and like Ronnie Barker is another one who's exactly the same as an actor, comedy actor, but as a pure comedian, it's got to be very common. Okay. Yeah, as a pure comedian. <laughs> well, we didn't get interrupted this time. No. Did we? And I, and, and I didn't have to look over my shoulder no. off or anything like that. We almost got invaded with some pigeons earlier that's on. Right, you yeah, might have seen yeah. that we were that, cornered by them, the weren't we? Have I'm going to be a little one we've got any bread in our pockets. <laughs> OK, and, uh, well, we'd better call your wife now and I'd better get myself ready for Rowena, who is That'd coming later on. And, but yeah. now I've, I've learnt the lesson now and where to look. We need to find, me and Rowena need to find somewhere because we're yeah. doing this in the same day. But listen, um, good luck. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> I will treasure this. <laughs> and uh, I hope the uh, profession is, is kind to you. It seems to be, have been quite kind to you already and may great roles come your way. I'm hoping so. Thank Thanks you. Thanks very much for Thanks, that. Thanks, Peter. I enjoyed it. Thank <laughs> you very much.